Okay, okay, let's start. Good afternoon, welcome, and thank you for coming. I'm pleased to introduce the engineer Daniel Pope, who talks about pay gain zero. No? Ah, okay. Hi, um, I'm Dan. Um, I am a uh, reliability engineer by day, uh, but for many years my hobby has been programming games. Um, I remember uh, my first computer was an Atari ST, and uh, I uh, you know, had ST Basic and stuff, um, and I immediately put that to one side because it came with loads of games. And so my, my interest in programming um, came from my my love of games, and I continue to uh, program games in my spare time, particularly during two weeks of the year, which are Pi Week. So Pi Week is a week-long games programming contest where you are challenged to write a game from scratch in Python um, on a topic that is given to you at the moment the contest starts. So you have uh, exactly one week to write a game, and then you have to upload it. Um, and I've taken part in Pi Week about 10 times, but I've won it twice. Um, so uh, I, um, that, that kind of background uh, was particularly of interest to Nicholas when he set up the PyCon UK education track. Um, and he kept saying, well, Dan, you have to kind of get involved with this because uh, teachers, we love this kind of stuff. Um, so... Uh, about uh, is it four years ago, the first uh, five years ago, the the first PyCon UK education track uh, rolled around, and uh, we were challenged. We were put into groups and challenged to uh, groups where, where teachers met developers and challenged to come up with some course material that the the teachers could teach. Um, and so, I, from from my uh, Pi game uh, or Pi, Pi Week and Pi game background, I dashed off the simplest possible uh, Pi game program. Uh, which is about sort of 20 lines, you do, uh, import Pygame, pygame.init, uh, while loop, some, you know, whatever. Um, and uh, one of the teachers said, no, nope, that's, uh, that's too difficult, that can't work in a classroom, because the amount of code that he would have to teach uh, for a student to be to get something productive by the end of the lesson was too much. So the, uh, the, the, the best programmers in the class, the people with, uh, who got it would race away and be bored, and the people who didn't get it would not have got it by the end of the lesson. So that problem sat around with me in, in my brain for uh, three or four years. Um, and then um, in... Uh, 2014, I think the October 2014 Pi Week, uh, I sat down to write a game and the theme was One Room. Um, I thought, I'm going to write this in a kind of way that uh, I would write it if I was creating a framework for complete beginners to Pi Game. Um, and then uh, last year, uh, I turned that into a library which is Pi Game Zero. So uh, this is a library that takes all of the boilerplate out of Pi Game. Pygame uh, is a library for access to graphics and sound and input, um, but wrapping that with a, a kind of thin Python layer that lets you, training wheels for Pygame, as it were. So you can get up to speed faster, the teachers can teach like a couple of lines at a time and, and make sure the class is caught up, um, but then it is just Pygame underneath, so you can uh, throw away the, the training wheels at some point and migrate to Pygame proper if you want. So I'm going to show uh, Pygame Zero uh, today. Um, I've written a blank file there. It's called demo.py. Uh, the secret of Pygame Zero is that it doesn't run with the standard Python interpreter. You run it with PGZ run. So PGZ run is all the clever machinery. A blank uh, file is a valid Pygame Zero program. Uh, it creates a blank window, but you can quit it, which is great, because you can't do that with a blank file in Pygame. So that, that proves you've got things installed. Um, then you can uh, say def for uh, screen dot build foo. So two lines of code, uh, and I've got a blue screen. Um, so let's write a little game. Uh, I'm going to. Just put in a 
use that name. Okay. Uh, is So that's a couple more lines, but um, that is using Pygame Zero Magic. Um, the sorry, the um, this mouth refers to an image. So if I do, hang on. There we go. So I've got a directory called images, um, and that's where my my image files are. So I don't need to do any uh, faffing to load those. Path manipulation. Um, they are just as sort of available as as strings. Uh, you can also there's, um, you can access them as objects in order to get the uh, the width and the height if you want. Um, but the actor there has a width and height. It's a pie game rectangle, which is why I can position it by um, mid bottom. It's uh, got all of the pie game um, attributes like left, right, x and y. Um, so uh, I'm going to have another thing. It's going to be very topical. So I've got a pincho. Uh, these were drawn in Inkscape, by the way, um, and then exported as pings. And uh, Pygame can load, uh, sorry, Pygame Zero can load pings or JPEGs. Um, so you, whatever file format you could, you should just be able to save something off the internet, maybe, um, and use it immediately in a game. And then I draw a, fun a create a function called update. I've got a falling pincher. So uh, a couple more lines. So two lines at a time. That's what we're aiming for. So if I say if keyboard.left, so I shouldn't I should have chosen a word that's easier to spell. X plus equal five. Um, and then I said these these actors are um, are just uh, rects. So I could do um, if uh, hey. <laughs> um <laughs> So um, I think that program is easy enough to grasp. I think the, by moving all of the complexity out of, uh, out of the Pygame program that you would write into Pygame Zero, um, we've created something that is much simpler to get started on, just at that, that level where you're transitioning from something like uh, Scratch. So kids will do Scratch up to the age of uh, 10, 9, uh, like some subtle nods. Um, and then uh, in the, the UK curriculum, they have to transition to a textual programming language. But Scratch has uh, the ability to create characters and uh, move them around um, out of the box. So that stuff is very accessible. For uh, Python programming, I think we're in a, uh, a situation where the out of the box experience is uh, worse. I, I think you, if, the, if your basic programs are um, uh, uh, what is your name, hello name, that's a big gap from where you were, just were in Scratch to where you are uh, in Python. So Pygame Zero uh, sort of fills that niche for uh, getting up to speed, uh, of, you know, getting something graphical on the screen to keep kids engaged as, they, as their programming career um, continues. Um, um, this was written in Python 3. I think that's important as well. So um, the uh, background for uh, Pygame and Python 3 is, is sort of a bit incomplete. Um, 
teachers told, told me that they wanted just Py, uh, Python 3 stuff. They wanted to be able to teach one language. And so the Python 2, 3 split was uh, a big problem. Um, when this was written, and I think this is still the case, there is no official release of uh, Pygame for Python 3. So a part of this was uh, actually finding ways to install Pygame and Python 3. Um, and that is all in the documentation. So uh, there are ways of doing it. It, it works. Um, but Pygame is catching up, actually. So there are now binary wheels on PyPI uh, that I think are for the uh, pre-release tag. So you have to say pip uh, minus minus pre or something. Um, but you can install Pygame. Um, um, and um, what else? Oh, OK. So I was going to show you um, some of the other things that Pygame Zero can do. So um, draw and update are your basic bread and butter for creating games, for animation. So draw will draw the screen. That will be called whenever Pygame Zero wants to update the, uh, draw the screen, refresh the screen. Update is called 60 times a second anyway. So if you don't define update, you can create games that are click driven. I'll show you the click API. So So all I needed to do was create a function called on, on mouse down, and Pygame Zero will call that function um, if I wanted to know what button I what button was clicked. I could go button. Um, oh, it didn't do anything with the button. So you see, I've got uh, Pygame Zero is adapting to the, uh, the callback that I define. Um, and I was uh, demoing this to, uh, I was sharing this around the internet uh, with some of the teachers who'd been involved in the PyCon uh, UK education track. And uh, Dave uh, had uh, said, it does, doesn't work. It's just not working. He'd written that. Um, and uh, I was dismayed that uh, the very first experience he had with this, this tool was uh, something that just didn't work and didn't give him any, any feedback on why. So if uh, you misspell a function, uh, it's got a spell checker and will tell you that you might have misspelled things. I think that's the, the kind of philosophy of Pygame Zero is that We've done a lot of work, actually, in sort of catching errors, re-raising them with better messages, because that kind of feedback about uh, if, you, if something breaks and it doesn't give you any information as to why, um, that is a, uh, 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 an obstacle to continuing your, your learning. So um, every time we could take something um, that the, the underlying Pi game was doing and make it more explicit, we've done that. Um, uh, I think I will stop there and invite questions, because the questions have been very good in the previous times I've taken this talk. Um, and I'd rather sort of, I want to know what you want to out of this, this tool. So uh, any questions? <laughs> Is there a Do you want a... One, two, one, two, one, two, up. Yeah, so I just wanted to ask if there is like an included way like for easy publishing of your game, especially for kids. Yeah, so because like they won't go into different Python right. installation stuff. Um, no, <laughs> but um, Pygame Zero was created with uh, a an understanding of the kind of portability problems that show up on 
uh, when, you, when you distribute games. So uh, having done PyWeek a lot of times, every time you use OpenGL, for example, um, it will work perfectly on all of the machines that you develop on, and then uh, somebody will run it, and there's a driver problem. So Pygame is ideal for the distribution of games because it just works. If it's there, it just works. It's CPU rendering, which is slow, but it's uh, incredibly reliable. Um, also, Pygame Zero will catch problems with file names, for example. So if I, um, uh, if I rename... then it will give me an error that my game could possibly not be exchanged with somebody with a different file system that was case insensitive. Uh, or ca uh, case, yeah, case insensitive. Um, so that kind of problem um, is, uh, to the best of my ability, sort of uh, dealt with by, by Pygame Zero. The, the actual sort of packaging of games and distributing them, I think, is a, is a future problem, but something I think we would like to solve. Uh, why three? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a problem for everybody, yeah. Um, um, uh, yes, yeah, so packaging, um, yes, and distribution. Um, yes, I think that comes later. I think that's something that we should, we should build. Um, the the Pygame Zero um, distribution is just like a directory, really. So if you have Pygame Zero installed, zipping up a directory and, and just sharing the uh, images directory and the sounds directory and the script. Um, and, and generally, it's assumed there is one script. This is for, for programs that are simple enough to be in one module. Um, then uh, that can be run on any computer with Pygame Zero. Um, there is another project. Um, if I've got internet, I can... You. I've been working on something called an, the Edu Bundle, um, which is uh, an attempt to provide a, a redistributable sort of bundle for Python um, for education that has Pygame Zero, Pygame, um, uh, PyQt, uh, Nicholas's new editor uh, available. So I think by pursuing all of these avenues, we can make uh, games easier for, uh, well, and Python easier for kids to, uh, to use at school and at home. Yeah, um, what about uh, networking? Because in, in games, it's also interesting if your, I don't know, your colleague from school can play right. your latest game with um, you. Yes, that simplified so too? Uh, Nicholas is putting his hand up. Uh, so there's network zero for that. Are you going to answer more for <laughs> <laughs> So uh, inspired by Dan's awesome work with Pygame Zero, um, as I mentioned in my keynote, uh, other people have been doing something something zero libraries, um, following the same philosophy that Dan has. Um, and Tim Golden, who's a Python core developer based in London, has created Network Zero. Um, he tried it out at the London Python Co. Dojo, and we had an awful lot of fun um, breaking it. Um, the important thing is, is that um, Tim has also been trying it out with teachers as well and getting their feedback. And uh, just to echo what Dan was saying, um, getting teachers involved in this is essential because they're the experts in dealing with children. Um, as developers, we, we can think what kids might want to do, um, but it's teachers who actually deal with them every day. But uh, there's Network Zero. I can't see why Network Zero couldn't work with Pygame Zero. And, GPIO. Right. and Ben Nuttall of the Raspberry Pi Foundation created GPIO Zero and also the hashtag zero all the things. So what you need to do is create a Pygame Zero project that uses GPIO Zero on a Pi Zero, Raspberry Pi Zero, with Network Zero as well. And then you've zeroed all the things and you can legitimately use that hashtag. Hi. So we talked yesterday evening, and uh, I just want to uh, repeat this suggestion. You can actually bundle this thing with uh, Py2 Engine to have a single executable file that doesn't need installation. I think, that I think that would be a uh, good thing to have, uh, but I have not written that yet. <laughs> yeah, oh, of course, but uh, yeah. I, I'm just saying that maybe that's 
a good thing to look into. And also, you could run the zip files directly, right? Uh, yes, like zip app, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, uh, thank th you. So, oh, sorry, uh, that wasn't really a question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I guess, uh, as you suggest features, uh, I should mention that this is on Bitbucket. Um, uh, zero. Um, and so pull requests are um, accepted. And uh, this is a community. Where is what? Are you pointing something? Oh, okay, thumbs up, right, okay, yes. Um, it's a community project, and, uh, and and it sort of relies on the feedback. I'm not a teacher. Uh, I am going on feedback from teachers, but I need the uh, feedback of people who have tried teaching kids with this to improve it. Um, and any time that you see an error message that is opaque um, or something doesn't work um, and doesn't give a trace back or doesn't give any indication as to why it's not working, that could be considered a bug. So um, please report it, if nothing else. OK. Another question. So since arriving in Bilbao... Um, Where am I looking? Sorry. Hello. Ah, right, right at the back. OK, right underneath the light. <laughs> since arriving at Bilbao, I've discovered that uh, my Spanish is exactly zero, and a lot of peop uh, Spanish people's English is also zero. Uh, what options are there for internationalizing so that an 11-year-old Spanish kid, for example, doesn't have to learn English to do on mouse down, etc.? Um, yeah, I, th I think it's probably uh, difficult to conceive of a way that you could internationalize this um, without making incompatibility problems. Uh, I think also that English is the language of programming, and uh, you know the Python libraries are, uh, and the and the Python keywords are English. Um, on the other hand, I think it's very reasonable that the documentation should be translated. Um, so if anybody would like to contribute a translation for the documentation um, or, or contribute any kind of tutorial or blog post, that would be uh, appreciated. Okay, the last question. Thanks very much. Um, this looks like it would be quite a nice way of building not just games but generic interfaces um, for interaction with all kinds of things. Um, how suited is, is it to playing the role of a, a kind of generic graphical interface builder? Um, you can write um, full graphical interfaces in Pygame, and people have done it. But I think at that point, you're probably not, uh, you're probably best if you're, you want to attack that kind of problem using Pygame itself. And there are libraries that do sort of uh, the GUI widgets for um, uh, embedding in a Pygame game that sort of mimic the, the kind of platform widgets. Um, but I think it's not, that, that kind of programming becomes more complicated than I think Pygame Zero is targeting. Um, so I think if you want to do that, that's, uh, and I, I certainly could see that if Pygame Zero was, um, uh, was to include some GUI tools uh, to share games, for example, uh, to, like to, to bundle them up to sort of uh, uh, enter some, some details and uh, an icon or something, um, then that could be done with a GUI that was written in, in Pygame, but may not use Pygame Zero to do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, for your interest, confidence. Right. And thank you very much. For thank you.